A lot of people complain about websites always looking the same these days, so in today's video, let's look at five ways you can spice up your next project. Hi, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, I help teach people how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. In today's video, I won't be diving into the code so much as looking at fun things that you can use in your projects, and if any of these do tickle your fancy, you can go and check the description for a link to a detailed tutorial on any of these. Dark mode, everybody loves a dark mode, but did you know you can create a dark mode for your site with CSS only? There's a media query to detect a user's system preference for light or dark mode. And if you're using custom properties for your colors, you can literally update the entire site with a single selector that's inside of that media query. It's super easy to do, and it also shows why custom properties are the absolute best. Animating gradients. Well, this can be harder than you think since it's a background image, but it's still doable. I'd be careful with this one as it could be kind of tacky, but it could be really nice if it's subtle or if you're making a site that you really want to be fun and whimsical and over the top on purpose, this could be a nice way to put things over the top. A word of caution on this though, be careful with it. Uh, if you are going to go with it, make sure you have a prefers reduced motion media query to disable it as well as some people really don't do well with animations. Down below you can find a link both to something on animating gradients as well as the preferred reduced motion. Clipping an image to your text, and this one's a really fun one, where you can get an image to act as a background for text itself, and it's also pretty easy to do. One caveat with this one though is you'll want to keep the text pretty large and bold to help keep it easy to read. An added bonus here, you can also use this to make gradient text as well, or even go out and combine it with that last one with gradient animations. Shape outside is a relatively new CSS thing, and it's kind of interesting because it brings back one of the original things we used to use a lot, which is floats. Uh, using shape outside, you can wrap the text around different shapes to create interesting layouts. And here's an example of one I did over on Brad Traversy's channel. And once again, you'll want to be careful with this one as doing too much crazy stuff with your text can make it really hard to read. You can definitely use it to create some unique layouts and break away from that standard look that we always see. A quick word here, the video I linked to goes to building that entire layout on Brad's channel, but there are chapters on it so you can skip to the parts on Shape Outside very easily. Speaking of layouts, Masonry Layout is finally coming to CSS. This is the layout that was made famous by Pinterest and it's really common these days. Now you've got to be careful with this one as it's currently only supported in Firefox, but that can be a nice learning opportunity as well, looking into either how you can implement a JavaScript solution in other browsers only or finding a way to make the layout work in other browsers, maybe by using columns instead and using a feature query for browser support. Uh, I do think it's an interesting one. And then, you know, as the browsers catch up to it, it automatically gets implemented on those ones. Really, really cool. I'm really excited for masonry. I think it's something that's going to be a lot of fun. And there we have it. A few ideas to help you create some more interesting layouts in the future. I hope I sparked an idea or two along the way, and I'd love to see what you create with them. The best way to share anything that you're up to or get help along the way if you do get stuck is to jump into my community. It's a Discord server that is full of front-end, back-end, and full-stack devs, and it's from people who are literally just starting to learn HTML than to others who have been in the industry for a decade. It's a great place to come, hang out, ask questions, get help, and anything else that you can think of. The link to it is in the description below, as well as the in-depth tutorials to everything that I mentioned in this video. And with that, a big thank you for watching, and even bigger thank you to my patrons for their support each and every month. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.